Good evening, everyone. This is Phil Foster. This is another episode of the Growth Cast, episode 40 to, uh, to be exact. Um, tonight's episode, putting the man in the mirror first. It's January 20th, 2022. And for some reason today, I don't know if you guys are getting any kind of back interference or anything like that from my microphone, but if you are, my apologies. Uh, let me see if I can fix this down here a little bit. Maybe that might help a little bit. <clears throat> Anyways, putting the man in the mirror first. January 20th. It's a big day for me. I've been traveling uh, for the past five months now, actually 23 weeks for work and we finished that project up today. So it's kind of nice to be back home and, um, you know, just back where I live uh, throughout the week, you know, I can, I've lost a lot of time in productivity. I normally uh, dedicate anywhere from two to two and a half hours a day of productivity towards my brand. And um, <clears throat> I've lost that over the past couple of months. And it's kind of nice to look forward to what I have, uh, all this extra time, I guess, so to speak to, and it's not really extra time because I'm going to be putting the work in, but it's nice to have that time back. Um, and it's uh, going to be good. I'm going to spend a, like I said, I'm going to take the week off. I'm going to be working in the office here on the brand and getting some things done. And, um, I'm just looking forward to that, you know, and that's kind of like what, what this whole message tonight is about, you know, I'm over the Rona all the way now. I'm feeling about 95%. I'd say a hundred percent, but I still got a little bit of sinus congestion going on. <clears throat> And uh, so that's kind of, you know, why the man in the mirror comes first, you know, and you got to focus on yourself first and foremost, if you're going to be a success, you know, when you start distracting yourself, yourself with other things and, it, you know, whatever you might be chasing in life, you got to have a, a plan of action there. So being back in town is going to be a nice switch up for me because the simple fact still remains is it's I've lost that two and a half, two hours, two and a half hours of uh, productivity to the commute. And now I'll have it again. Give me one second. My wife's dog is starting to fuss. I don't know what his problem is. You let her know to come get him. Anyway, so Rona's out of the house. Flu's out of the house. We're doing good. And, uh, you know, I just really wanted to go over. I got about six different ways, you know, and, and, and I'm streaming this over on Facebook as well. Um, because it's important that men understand that uh, if, if they are not focused on themselves first uh, and their fitness for that fat, for that fact, uh, they're going to struggle in whatever they're going, uh, they're going to go attempt to chase or uh, procure in their lives and be successful at it. It's, it's difficult for you to uh, move forward when you're distracted everywhere. Okay. And, um, and that's why this is, this topic is important. You know, last night I was supposed to have a guest on and there was a little snafu and once again, it's from working out of town. I hadn't had the opportunity to schedule with that individual. I've got two quality gents coming up. It's going to be uh, Thor Markinson. You might see him on Facebook. He's a solid gent. He's all about pro masculinity. And then I'm going to have the real Bobby Dino on as well. Uh, Bobby Dino is uh, me and him have done a little bit of collaboration. I've met him face to face and he is a solid guy. He's got some great insights. He's uh, lived an interesting life, so to speak. And uh, I look forward to having him on. Uh, in the coming weeks uh, uh, to share his story with you. Just getting the calendar lined up and now I'll be back in town. It's a good, a good opportunity for me to do that. So moving forward with the man in the mirror and why it is important to have you come first. Knowing that, <clears throat> knowing that your success has come from your, uh, from your attention, okay? And realizing that um, when your attention is elsewhere, uh, these things will fail. All right. So when you put yourself first in this world, uh, it's not being selfish. It's being a man. And a lot of guys, they struggle with that one. And so we'll start with, you know, the gym aspect of that, because I am streaming this over on the Facebook uh, Phil Foster Fitness page uh, to kind of get some eyes on uh, this topic as well. You know, there's a lot of guys out there that are struggling with fitness and figuring out you know, exactly. <clears throat> you know, well, when I go to the gym, you know, my wife gives me grief or my girl gives me grief because I'm not spending time with her. And that's that's where uh, you as a man need to understand that it's important to put you first. OK, 
uh, she's giving you that little bit of a difficult time and it might be a big time. You know, I don't know your relationship situation. Uh, I will tell you that if you're slowly changing who you are as a human being, uh, she will be resi uh, resistant or hesitant to these changes in who you are as a man because she gets comfortable with how you are. Uh, when you start putting yourself fir first, you're a lot less likely to be controlled because you are living the life you want to live and you're not living your life for someone else. So when it comes to the gym, you know, and she's wanting to know, you know, she's giving you grief about that and going to the gym and, and getting in shape or getting stronger or, you know, trying to lose a little bit of weight there. If that's what your intentions are, whatever your intentions are in the gym, <clears throat> understand, OK, that it's not necessarily a character attack on you. It's just she's she's under she's starting to figure out, OK, he's he's turning inward. And he's starting to understand that he wants to do things for himself. And she might feel a little bit threatened about that. And that's OK. You got to understand that uh, she is just a lady and she needs your guidance. And that's where it takes you as a man to say, look, this is this. Is, I'm doing this for me uh, and me alone first. OK, uh, obviously, when you're in a relationship, you know, it's all about teamwork and working things out together. Uh, but certain things uh, when it comes to being a man, it's important to understand that if you come first, your relationship will have a better chance of success. And especially when it comes to the gym and training. OK, I mean, you can't if you're up there focusing on your training and what you're looking to do, uh, you know, nine times. out of, And I and I fell in this pitfall with my girl. Uh, you know, I started taking her to the gym and I started losing focus on what I was doing on me. And I, and I started helping her, you know, kind of guiding her through the, the weights and getting things uh, straightened out and how to do the movements and movement patterns and whatnot. And I will tell you that my training suffered. And then I turned my focus back on me and my training took back off. So when you get that resistance from your girl, it's OK. Don't worry about that. Just go ahead and uh, hit it up and definitely get it. <clears throat> Put you first. Because it's important. It's important to realize that if you are not focused on you, nothing is going to work. And so another thing that you can do as a man to put you first is um, your hygiene. OK, and your appearance. And I'm going to kind of bundle those two together. I was going to do them separately, but it's important to understand when you start getting your physicality in order, it's important to start conveying to the world your intentionality. OK, and you can do that through your appearance. Now, being that I'm in construction, it's kind of funny because um, I kind of live these two lifestyles, so to speak. When I'm out on the project, you know, when I'm on my projects, you know, I'm, I'm not dressed up. OK, I'm not like the straw boss that you're used to seeing, um, like on a commercial job site. You know, I'm you know, I've got work boots on uh, that I wear a tool bag at times. Uh, I love to build things. Uh, I have a work coat, you know, work. You know, we all wear all the guys wear collared shirts on my job, believe it or not. Well, I'm a big believer in that. So we wear uh, white collared shirts and khaki pants. So we're we're looking all of the same, so to speak. And, um, you know, I drive my knock around truck, which is a, an older Chevrolet. And it's kind of funny because, you know, we live relatively com comfortable and I got my old knock around truck sitting out front. And um, so, you know, the signals that you send, OK, it's important to understand that what the signals that you're sending there. OK, so when I'm at work, that's how I look. But when I'm not at work and I'm doing things for my brand or I'm I'm doing something with my wife and child, or if I'm going out to uh, to a public event, uh, I'm definitely dressed to convey my position in this world. And a lot of guys miss that, you know, it comes down to your hygiene as well. OK, and gentlemen, I mean, a lot of this has to go uh, shouldn't go should go unsaid. You know, it really should. But there's a lot of men in this in this world today that are just way, way too comfortable and they have lost. Uh, um, they've lost way too much. Okay. They've lost way too much of who they are as men. Um, uh, and real quick, you know, Austin Olin, he says, how much as a man should I open up to a girl I'm dating? Well, it depends on the topic. You know, if they're, uh, if, if you're looking to date your girl and you're dating her and you want to open up to her, I mean, are you talking about talking, you know, some emotional things, your feelings or things like that? Because see, that's where you have the bros for. OK, that's where you have men's spaces to talk about what's going on with you. If you want to talk about your relationship and what's going on with her, 
that's perfectly fine. Or if you guys have kids uh, together, I'm looking at your, uh, your your picture. It looks like you're it looks like you're holding a, a, a child there. You know, when, it, when it's when it's about business for the family, it's between your your relationship with her uh, all, all day long. Go for it. When it comes to discussing uh, what's going on in your world and your worries as a man, I would definitely encourage you to bring that to other men. And especially men that are going through what they're going through or what you're going through, they've already been through it. Okay. So they can speak from experience. It's important to understand that. Um, my problems are definitely, oh, uh, Austin, my problems are definitely not my wife's problems. She has no clue what I deal with on the day to day. And that's the whole thing about men. Once you start leading your, your tribe or, or if you're just dating a girl and you just have a girl in your life, uh, once you start just leading her in the relationship, um, that is your, is your job as a man to handle the business of the relationship. And if you're just dating her, obviously you might have your own place and her own place, uh, but you're making all the decisions, you know, when it comes to, you know, Hey, we're going to go out to eat tonight. You don't, you know, you don't want to, uh, say that, so to speak, open up about what you're dealing with, where it might be work issues. It might, it could be financial issues. It could be, it could be as simple as car trouble, you know, uh, as a man, uh, you want to convey strength, power, and integrity. So how do you do that? You do not trouble your girl, my friend, with any of those things. Okay. You, you just focus on the relationship and what you guys are dealing with. And, and I will tell you is when you open up to her, if there's something that you're not liking about what she's doing in the relationship, you definitely need to open up to her about that, my friend. Okay. Uh, knowing knowing that what you have to say is pinnacle because all things flow through the man first. If it, you have a family, all things flow through the father, so to speak. Uh, women are, 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 are created uh, to support and follow their man 100%. I will tell you that uh, when you start making your problems, her problems, uh, the dynamic gets screwed up. And that's why a lot of men are in the positions they're in right now. Uh, when it comes to relationships, you see a lot of weak men uh, and they're being led around like cart horses. Uh, they are not leading in the relationship at all. And that's because they have turned their girl who they should be having great sex with and uh, just a good time in general. Uh, and I'm not saying it's going to be a perfect time all the time. Uh, they've turned them into their confidants. Okay. And that's where other men come into play in your life. My friend, it's important for you as a man to have other men in your life to convey your problems to, because the simple fact still remains. Uh, those aren't her problems. They're yours. And what that'll do is when you stop doing that, if you're doing that now, uh, she'll recognize that, and then that in you. It's important to focus on you first, okay? And um, like swinging back on my discussion there about your hygiene and the way you're conveying yourself to the world through your dress, um, before uh, Austin popped that question on me there, uh, knowing, okay, boy, this boom sure is being a pain tonight. Um, know that. When I go into social situations, I am dressed for that occasion. Um, I communicate to the world, okay, I'm into fitness, so I, I wear clothes that are form fitting and uh, that show my physique. Um, I'm dressed nice. I don't. I'm not dressed in like name brand stuff. Uh, dressed to the to the nines, so to speak. Uh, understand that you can convey to the to the world around you through your appearance that you're a man of strength, honor, and integrity knowing that your hygiene comes into play with that as well. Gents, we've all seen them. We've seen the guys out there that, you know, they get out of bed. It's like they just literally rolled out of bed and like they're walking the street and their hair hasn't been combed. Uh, they, um, they just look disheveled. Uh, they might have an old t-shirt on or something like that. And it's just, you're kind of like, bro, you've lost yourself. Understand that people are, we have more senses going to our eyes than any other sense in our body. And that's why a lot of guys, they want to get into shape, you know, because people recognize, okay, when my, when my physique's on gleam, and what I mean by that is it's shining, it's looking good. You know, I'm not, I'm not out of shape anymore. I'm, I'm looking solid. Uh, people tend to notice that because it takes a lot of hard work to get there. So realizing that your physicality and then your appearance and your hygiene 
Okay, it's kind of like my beard. Believe it or not, every Thursday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, I do these streams at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time uh, on Thursdays. I will tell you, I will tell you that I go and get my beard shaved. I've got a, a little Latin lady that takes care of my beard. Her name's Maria. She's awesome. And that's something I do for me. It's non-negotiable. Okay, she she trims my beard. She, she gives me a straight razor shave. It's, it's, it's epic. You know, every Thursday I do that for me. Kevin Smith says, uh, 100% agree with you, Phil. KPM Supervision says, I dress without no brands on me. I don't, I don't, I do not, I don't free advertise. Jimmy G says, appearance and presence matter 100%, my friend. All three of you gentlemen. Uh, understanding that I do that for me, okay? And that's how I'm putting me first. My appearance and how I convey Okay, you notice that my beard is well trimmed, well well maintained. Um, that's letting people know. Okay, he takes care of his hygiene. You know, I, I shower daily. I mean, there's a lot of guys out there, gents, that they don't do this right. They don't take care of themselves. They have lost who they are. If they think it's okay to wear dirty clothes and look disheveled, and it's just not the case. Uh, <clears throat> KPMM supervision, you know, I will tell you, this is my buddy's brand right here. The, the fraternity of excellence. My buddy Zach gave me this, uh, this pullover. Um, I wear this a lot, man. It's a really comfortable one. Uh, the brands I do wear, my friend, are brands of other entrepreneurs or business associates or people that are in business. I support their brands 100%. I'm all about small business. Um, but realizing, uh, circling back on the discussion that, um, uh, knowing that your appearance and your physicality, they go hand in hand. So once you start getting yourself in shape, go out there and take care of yourself and uh, get um, get some clothes that, that are flattering to you, okay? And uh, if you're just now starting to get into shape, it's, it's okay, you know? I mean, a few pieces at a time, you know, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to go out there and blow the, blow the bank on a bunch of clothes and um, things like that. But I will tell you that if your hygiene is on point, gents, and your appearance is on point, even if your physique isn't on point, people will take notice and you'll get more respect that way. Uh, Austin says, you are treated differently when you have pride in yourself, not just clothes, but posture while wearing the clothes. Amen to that, Austin. You have the game figured out. It's amazing to me, okay? Uh, and we've all seen them in different business situations. Uh, KPM says 100% I'll add to advertise those, mate. Heck yeah, my friend. Uh, understand that, um, you know, we've all seen gents, you know, they're, they're in powerful positions, you know, but they're, they're, they're really out of shape, but you know, they're dressed well. Okay. And they can communicate effectively to who they're speaking to, whether it's a, a group of people or their employees, and, uh, they're still lacking that one piece of respect. Okay. And that's that physicality aspect as we are constantly uh, judging people and, and evaluating everyone in our circles and in our life, realize that once you start dialing your physicality in, okay, uh, and getting dialed back in, okay, and getting healthy again, and, and you have that trifecta right there, you're really going to communicate to the world that you are putting you first, okay? So that's the, that's the, second, that's the second point there. There was kind of two pieces into that one, right? Um, the family office is very well said, brother. Thank you. This is the family office brand, the fraternity of excellence. <laughs> Zach, I'm glad you stopped by this evening, my friend. Um, so understanding that, okay. Understanding putting you first is not something that is selfish. Okay. And another way that you can communicate to the world and to yourself that you are all about you. Okay. And I'm going to kind of tee off of what we were, what I was talking with with Austin is you don't make the world your problems the world's problems okay you start really focusing in okay and you start really diving into what you're dealing with as a man okay and you seek out avenues on how to fix those issues in your life you're not kind of like what we were talking about with Austin earlier about talking with this chick. Uh, it's important to know that, you know, like Zach or Jimmy G or some of these other gents that I've known face to face, you know, they understand where I've been. OK, and we all have traded, traded, you know, sort of speak swap stories, so to speak. And uh, we've decided, you know, we've come to great ideas and how to uh, and how to get around situations that we're all dealing with as men. 
Uh, that's one surefire way that you're putting yourself first. And that is one thing that you have to do is to get other men in your life. And there's a bazillion different ways you can go about doing that. Obviously, with social media, you see a bunch of things going on, guys. OK, it's crazy out there. Uh, there's a lot of different men's groups, but it's kind of like why I wore this brand. It was very intentional. Uh, the fraternity of excellence uh, i've been involved in it since uh since zach and his uh his past business partner incepted it um, and i will tell you that there's a lot of men that get together and work out situations that they're going through and it's amazing to me when you see guys in that situation they start you know they kind of hang back at first and they're not really putting themselves first they're, first they're kind of like they don't know how to deal with the information coming at them because they're seeing everybody else going through whatever they're going through it's important to understand, OK, that um, when you're just starting out, uh, you're not going to put you first. OK, and it's difficult for a lot of men to grasp that. And so you'll see, especially in this in this group, especially you'll see them kind of hang back at first because they're kind of like, whoa, what's going on in here? Oh, my gosh, this guy's talking about he's going through this. This one's going through that. And, you know, everybody's kind of bouncing ideas and understanding uh, what the other the other man's dealing with. And the two things happen right there, first and foremost. Once that realization of, man, I'm not alone. And man, these guys have been down that road and fixed it. There's hope for me too, okay? It's important, important to understand when you start putting yourself first, the man that's in the mirror, the guy that you look at when you wake up and are brushing your teeth, uh, when you start putting yourself first, you're going to surround yourself with other men that are improving themselves as well. OK, and everybody's calibrated differently. Everybody's doing things differently in this world, right? Everybody is on a different path of growth and development and understanding um, uh, where they're headed and what they're doing. OK, and then and once you start finding that strat of being able to communicate to other men, OK, what you're going through. It's important to understand, my friends, it is important to understand that when that information comes to you from those other men in your life that you've sought out, you might not like it. You might be resistant to it. You might be in denial about it. You might say, no, that's not me. That's not the case. But secretly inside, when you log off or you get off the Zoom, the weekly Zoom calls that they have, uh, you know, deep down in your heart, you know that things are going down in your life, man. There's things are crumbling. OK, the family alpha says respect is earned. You have to earn it from yourself before anyone else will consider giving it to you. One hundred percent. One hundred percent, sir. Uh, understand that once that information starts coming from uh, other men to you and their solutions to your issues, that is a key sign that you are beginning to put you first because you are starting to deal with your stuff that you're dealing with that you're going through as a man okay understand that and I, this is one of zach's things no man is an island okay we're all going through these different things in our lives we're all dealing with this and that and the other thing but i promise you that you're not the first man and you're not the last man that's going through whatever you're going through right now i don't care how ugly it is there's somebody else has been there and done that and you can learn from those guys. You can learn from these other men. So putting yourself first involves taking information from other men that have experienced. OK, they've they've experienced what you are going through and they're giving you quality information. And that's why I caution a lot of guys. Right. I caution people all the time. Be careful. Be careful who you buy that or not really buy, but you you consume that information from because there's a lot of misinformation out there. They don't call these people social media influencers for no reason. OK, they're influencing you when you turn on the devil. That's what I call these guys. When you turn the devil on, you get onto social media. Well, I don't care if it's TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, wherever people are influencing your ideas. People are influencing you. Make sure that that stuff is quality coming in and really do your research. You know, Zach's got a really good operation. One way you can check him out and what he's doing. I believe he's got a minute March kicking off here in March. That's a good way for you to find out who you are as a man and learn how to turn your focus back towards you, gentlemen. 
that's a lot of props right there <laughs> from a man, but I'm, I believe in what he does. He's helped a lot of gents and it's important to realize that. Um, another key indicator, okay, or something that you might want to do when it comes to putting you first, okay, understanding this one is paramount, okay? This is huge. And I'm going to let this sit here quiet for just a second. Understanding that you do not have to accept any behaviors that irritate, cause you discomfort, angst, or anything from any other human being that you have in your life. Okay? It's interesting to me how much people put up with from other people, from other human beings in their life. Okay. And what happens is, is they are trying to influence you with those negative behaviors. Okay. You do something, they, they react negatively. And what happens, you, the, the subliminal message there, the psychology behind that is, okay, uh, if I do that, she's going to behave, my girl's going to behave in that fashion again. If I do that, they're going to behave in that fashion again. Understand that if you're living with integrity and you're doing what's right for you first, and you're not out there just like causing mayhem and chaos in everyone else's life. Uh, if you're doing things that are focused on what's best for you first, and these individuals in your life are not bringing uh, support or peace in your general direction, they don't need to be there. And so cutting ties with individuals that are not furthering the development of who you are as a man is super important. It's kind of like, um, you know, when I first started getting back into training and I'm talking like really getting into it, there's a lot of guys that I used to hang around or chit chat with. And, uh, you know, their big thing is, you know, they smoked the grass or they were drinking, drinking a lot of alcohol and stuff like that. And I was like, no, nah, I ain't got time for that, man. I'm, I'm doing this over here. And they kind of hated on me. And so, you know, I just cut them out of my life. Uh, understanding that when you start working on yourself, there's going to be a lot of people that reveal themselves to you. OK, especially when you start really focusing and putting you first, understanding, understanding that you as a man are created to do great things and know that when you put you first, uh, the people that are not there to watch you win or support you in your game of life, they're there to hold you back. And it's a difficult one. OK, and that's a tough one to master people. People really stuff with that, get stuck on that one. Waste of Talent says, Philip, blessings to you, bro. My friend, so good to see you. I, I need to have you on the channel to, to spit some, some serious stuff to these folks. I got to get with you and get you on here. Much respect to you. It's so good to see you here this evening. Uh, realizing realizing that when, when they start revealing themselves to you, uh, they will definitely, definitely have to go. Okay. Because see, you are important. What you want out of life is important. And when you stop living your life to please everyone else around you or kind of drag them with you to where you're going and you put you first, that's where it's at. That's where you will start really revealing to the world that you're putting you, you first, knowing that what you're doing is the best possible thing for you. Another big one, another big one that you can do to put you first, gentlemen, you first, okay, your finances, okay, realizing, realizing, realizing that you are, you need to be a responsible individual. Uh, if you have a tribe that, that's looking for you for support and security, it's up to you as a man to provide that environment for your children to grow. Okay. And for your woman to fall into her feminine role and do the things she wants to do. KPM supervision says, yes, I experienced that already. Some people can hold you back. Well said. Yes, sir. It's, it's amazing to me um, how they reveal themselves though. And see, as you start really turning inward and you really start focusing on putting you first, that's a good indicator right there that you're working on you and doing what's best for you because you cut them out of your life. That's the, that's where the discipline comes from, right? That's where that's that, that's that next layer, right? You're shedding that old skin. It's kind of like a snake, right? Right. 
it, you're, you're, you're shedding that old skin and you're moving on to the next level. Family Alpha says chameleons are plenty. Cut their, cut their effing heads off. Real bros never change colors. Keep them close. 100%. It's amazing to me uh, how many men struggle with that, though. They always turn back because it's comfortable. And it's not easy for you to face things on your own because we were conditioned from a young age as men, especially young boys. They're conditioned to go to mommy all the time. You know, and it's because dad was always at work. OK, and so, you know, I'm, I'm middle age. I mean, I'm 48 years old, so I've, I've experienced that. My, my mom predominantly raised me. OK, I mean, my dad was a pilot in the Air Force. He was always gone and uh, realizing, realizing that um, it's a very difficult thing. But that's how, you know, as a man, you are definitely looking to put you first. Uh, your finances, circling back on that one, your finances and getting your financial house in order. Uh, men in general, they want success. OK, and through money comes what power, uh, freedom and the ability to do the things that you really want to do. If you are broke and indebted to Visa, MasterCard, American Express, the mortgage, three car notes because uh, you've been uh, fiscally irresponsible, uh, that tells me that you are still living for other people because you're trying to live outside of your means uh, reeling those things in and start knocking those debts down okay and getting rid of them okay and having a little bit of cash for you okay and having a little bit of security for your tribe if you have one there's a lot of guys out there they don't have a wife and kids they don't have you know a living girlfriend they don't have a lot of responsibilities and that's great because they're, they're just starting out and they're young and that's that's predominantly where this message is coming from. If you're, here's the deal. If you're 18 years old, 18 to 25 right now, I would tell you to zero out all debt. Okay. Unless that debt is making you money. All right. But my sneaking suspicion is with the way society is rigged now and the way people operate that I would say that most of the debt that, that young people have is out of vanity. It's out of buying wants and not securing needs or sec using debt to secure more uh, income. And you might say, well, how does that even look? Well, as a man, when you start utilizing debt to make money, uh, that would look like you you taking a loan and, and buying several properties. We can just use real estate for an example and uh, taking that money and, and, and generating money off of that debt. And it's, it's you know, two xing itself. OK, and understanding that uh, you're making money off that debt versus just having revolving credit card debt. And, uh, you know, buying the things that you think people are impressed by. See, when you put yourself first, you want to impress you first. You don't care what the world thinks or what the and it's kind of like, you know, you're, you're going through life here. And, you know, and I would hey, right here, consumer debt all the time for a long time when I was younger. And that's one thing I wish somebody would have showed me at, at a young age. Is not buying everything that I had to have or wanted. Uh, I was a, I was a yes man. And that translated over into my relationships with women, too. I bought them whatever the hell they wanted. You know, I've wasted a lot of money on uh, trying to make people happy and putting them first in my life. And I, I promise you, young, if you're younger, take this to the bank and, and start slowing down on that. You know, zero that debt out. Tell your girl, hey, you know, I'll give you my time, but you don't need my money right now. And see how she reacts. OK, I'm not saying that you can't take your girl out to a nice dinner. I'm not saying you can't go do some fun things together. I'm saying, does she really need like three purses? Uh, you know, when you guys go on a trip, does she need to go to the to the mall and, and spend a couple of grand of your cash on, you know, accessories and all this? I've been there and I've done that. Trust me. You can talk to my wife now. Uh, when we first got together there, the checkbook was wide open and she went crazy. Um, and now. Uh, that I've straightened myself out and uh, calm down with that, <laughs> calm down with that. You know, it's, it, she comes to me if she has something that she wants or needs and we talk about it. And that's the, that's the, that's signaling to me is a man uh, and signaling to the world that what, what I have to say matters and we're going to do it my way under my roof, under my terms. And uh, that's how it is. Putting yourself first will save you a lot of headache and a lot of financial misery gentlemen. Okay. If you just slow down a little bit and realize that, uh, the money's going to come and go, uh, why, why put yourself in debt behind it? 
put yourself first and let yourself be comfortable. Okay. If you want to be irresponsible with your money, go out and buy something for you, not for someone else. And definitely don't go buy something to, to like show off or impress someone else. Now, obviously there's the, there's the trust fund kids out there, or there's guys that have hit it big in the stock market or crypto or investing and things like that, that have done extremely well for themselves that can afford three or four Lambos and six or seven beach houses. I am super pumped for those people because they figured out the system and played it. Um, give me the game. I'm over here. You can hit me on all my socials. If you're at that, at that level, I'm ready to listen. I'm ready to learn. I'm always learning. Um, understanding that putting yourself first uh, is one surefire way uh, to protect yourself, so to speak, and not be like upside down. He says, by training from Phil. I appreciate that, sir. Now, I will tell you that's an investment in their in themselves, right? That'll, that'll definitely help them level up. You will get stronger, you will get leaner, and you'll get faster. Um, and if that's the goal that you're after, I can definitely help you with that. But that's not something that um, I would say is a vanity thing because I teach gentlemen uh, how to become the best version of themselves. Uh, and that's that's what it's all about, 100%. So, you know, we've talked about a few other things, you know, and it's important to understand that when you put yourself first, you know, uh, a lot of people in your in your in your general area in your life, you know, they're really going to get salty behind it. You know, when you start uh, putting yourself first uh, in all aspects, you know, the one of the big aspects is your job. You know, how many of us have worked for somebody that has demanded more from you than what was agreed upon when you were hired? It happens all the time. I mean, you don't have to. You don't have to have a super high end corporate job. You can just be a, a gent that runs a forklift, for instance. And the boss says, OK, well, I need you to come in on a Saturday, you know, and you're and you're a salary guy. OK, so you're making salary. And the boss says, hey, I really need you to come in on Saturday. Understand that if it's not negotiated and he's not compensating you for that because you are salary. OK, you are giving away yourself to him to make him happy. Uh, realize that it's OK to say no and put yourself first. You know, I don't know how many guys in the corporate world. I don't know how many guys that in the corporate world, they do things for other people. It's kind of like they have a they're, they have a work partner or they have a group of people they're working with and maybe one or two of the people in the group, they'll sandbag. They won't get their part of the, the deal done. And they have like a presentation on Monday. So they work their butts off all weekend. They lose the soccer games with the, with the wife and kids on Saturday because they're focused on that. Uh, they lose that time with their girl. If they don't have wife and kids, you know, I mean, they're just losing time for a job. Okay. And their salary. So they're not being compensated for it because it has to be done. Right. It just has to be. You know, instead of calling those people to the carpet and saying, like, you need to get your part of this done, I'm done. And then facing the firing squad behind it one time or two times and letting those people know in your life, hey, I'm not going to carry you anymore. OK, I'm putting me first. I'm not, I'm not your I'm not your daddy. <laughs> I'm not going to carry you. Uh, you got to do your part. And you say to me right now, you're saying to yourself, man, this guy's crazy. There's no way. You know, I, the, the office setting that I work in, man, well, I wouldn't be considered a team player. Well, let me tell you something. You're being taken advantage of if you let them walk all over you like that. And it's important to realize that um, you as a man don't deserve that. You just don't. And you need to be able to say no. Austin says definitely when they lose that attention. Yes, they do, my friend. Yes, they do. So when it comes to your workplace, putting you first is another hard spot to be in. And, you know, we all see this perfect life. <clears throat> you know, we see these guys on social media, you know, they they have all this time on their hands. They have, you know, their social media influencers or, you know, they're just stock traders or whatever. They, you know, they're, they're all over the they're all over the Internet when they don't have to go to a job. They have that magical, they have that magical movement going on for themselves. Realizing, take care, man. Good to see you, man. I appreciate you stopping by. 
understand, understand that that is nine times out of 10, you have to be in the right place at the right time to make that work. Realizing that when you start focusing on you and putting you first, you will eventually have that because you will wake up enough and you will figure out what you want to do for you. And that leads me into my last point. When, uh, when you start moving away from that, from being the slave in that corporate job or your, the job that you have, and you start figuring out ways to uh, develop what you want to do. When you start really looking and focusing in on the man in the mirror, you start chasing your passions and your dreams. You start doing things uh, to further what you want to do. Okay. And it's important for you to be able to do that. It's important for you to say, okay, you know, this is kind of scary. So I'm going to plan for this, but I'm going to do this, 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 and this. And you put that plan together and you follow it. Okay. And it's not going to be easy. If it was easy, everybody would do it. Uh, realize, okay. And understand that as a man, it is your responsibility to chase your own passions. No one, can, no one else can do it for you. And when you're letting the man in the mirror down by not chasing the things you want out of life, you're really letting that man in the mirror down. You cannot tell me, okay, the way the, the, way the, system, is, what is it? the, way the system is set up, okay, we work until we're 65 right now. That's the current retirement age, I guess is what they call it. And then you have what, like, 13 to 18 years of retirement where you can relax. That's crazy. And in the meantime, you have made someone else extremely wealthy. You've, you've propped up other businesses instead of building something for yourself and putting you first. And it can be as simple as, you know, I'm going to have a side hustle and I'm going to cut some grass. I like cutting lawns. Okay. And you start, you start cutting some grass on you. Who says you can't have your own lawn business? You know, hey, I like to plant trees. I like to paint houses. I don't care what. It can be anything. Whatever you're into, focus a little bit of your time on that. Put you first. Put the things you want to do first in there. And you'll start having more of that time when you quit trading your time for money and you start saying no, especially at your job. And that's the big thing, you know, kind of going into tonight's topic, you know, I'd see I had to, I had, I had no choice, uh, work out of town. If I wanted to make money, I had to travel to do it. It was very good money and it, we were, I was compensated nicely. And I want you to understand that, uh, and you, you can play some of my other streams here on my channel. You'll hear me say that I'm slowly making moves to changing that to where I'm not trading so much of my time for money anymore figuring out strategies that I am happy with doing uh, that I want to do on my terms. And you can do the same as well. It just takes a little bit of time to figure out what it is. I'm a little bit late to the game, so to speak. I mean, I'm 48 years old and I started doing this three years ago. So it's 45. So 45. So you can also take that to the bank that, okay, it doesn't matter how old you are. You can do whatever you want if you put your mind to it. Realizing when you focus on you first, it's possible because when you're focusing on you first and you're putting your best foot forward, the opportunities for you to have are going to be limitless. Realizing that you, my friend, will have more opportunity because your appearance and physique are on point, uh, your, your hygiene is on point. Uh, you understand what meaningful relationships are and understanding boundaries and telling people, hey, no, I'm not here to be your daddy. Uh, knowing, okay, that you are comfortable telling people, no, that's not what I want to do. Uh, you have an ability to lead in your relationships, uh, especially with women. It's important to understand that you have other men in your life, okay, that you can look to for advice, and understanding on things you don't understand. And that's a beautiful thing about technology. You know, everybody makes these excuses on, on, man, that guy's so lucky, man. How did he do that? You know, how did he get that? How does he have the Porsche? How does he have the big house? How does he have the girl with the big boobs or whatever? I don't care what it is. You have a smartphone right here in your hand. Okay. You're, you might even be listening to me on a smartphone. Understand that the ability for you to have everything you want in this world 
is right there at your fingertips. Understanding that if you put you first and you start chasing what you really want to do, it'll happen. I know it will. A lot of people are doom and gloom about what's going on in, the, in our country. You know, they're like, oh, there's like some sort of big black swan event going on or, you know, things are just going to get so ugly in the markets. You know, there's going to be this, that or the other thing. Understand that when people are panicking like that, you buy into that panic and that fear. You invest in yourself. You improve yourself and let them fall to the side and you will rise, my friends. It's just it's important for you to focus on you first, though. That's what this game is all about. And that's what the growth cast is all about. I want you to savagely take what you want from this world. There is no reason for you not to be able to take anything you want from this world and become a success. There is no reason for every man that walks this planet hurtling through space. There's no reason for us to not all have what we want out of life. We all have the eight, the same 84, I think it's like 80, 84,600 seconds a day. We all have the same amount of time every day. The difference is, is we all have different amounts of time here. It's what you do with those 84,600 seconds in a day that make the difference. Are you spending more of those seconds focused on you and what you want out of this world are you too focused on everything else and every all these other distractions and what's going on out there? And that's something to really think about there, right? Think about that. 84,600 seconds. And I might even have that reverse, guys. You Somebody might, might whip the math off. It could be like 86,400 seconds. It's one of the two. Um, understand that we all have the same amount of time every day. Chisel out just a little bit for you and it's not going to be selfish. It's what you need and what you want is what's important first. It's kind of like when an air, you know, you fly on an airplane, they tell you, you know, put your mask on your air, you know, your oxygen mask, not the, you know, the muzzle that they've been having us all wear or whatever for the past two years, you know, put that on first before you help someone else. There's a lesson in there. You first, the man in the mirror first savagely take and be very, 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 very stingy with those seconds because it's important to understand that you, my friends, are the only thing holding you back right now. The choices that you're making and realizing that those choices are hurting your opportunities. Those people that you know deep down inside aren't for you. And what I mean by that is they aren't 100% supporting you and they kind of, you know, they throw shade on you when you're winning. They don't need to be there because all they're going to do is ride your coattails to the top. And that's just dead weight. They got to go, you know, and assess everyone in your life. Realize that it's up to you to make that choice. It's up to you to savagely take from this world, to definitely put 